You let one rip. Yeah, the the uh, the trial's pretty cool so far. We need to determine what was used to kill Sayaka. I mean, that's easy. It's the kitchen knife. Make your argument. Kitchen knife set. So what was used to kill her? There was some kind of sharp object thrust into her stomach. Yep, correct. Without a doubt, that is the murder weapon. Yes. So the killer used some random knife they had no, on not him. a random knife. It was the kitchen no, knife wrong. set. We're doing it. No. I do think it was a knife, but not just any knife. I'm almost positive it was a kitchen knife. Huh? A kitchen knife? After the murder, we discovered that one of the knives from the kitchen was missing. Which means that knife must be the murder weapon. Oh, yeah. I guess that makes sense. You could sort of see the weapon sticking out of her stomach. And if you look real close, I could totally see that being a kitchen knife. And there's blood on the handle. I didn't even notice that before. So the killers hurt their hand, I think. Okay, so the murder weapon was a kitchen knife, but where does that get us? I mean, we all know Makoto killed her, right? That's right. Makoto's room was the scene of the crime. What more proof do you need? We wasn't in there, you don't... Hold on a second. I'm... Let's draw our conclusions after we've presented our arguments. Otherwise, what's the point of the trial? Well, we can talk all we want. It's not going to change that conclusion. I don't think that's true at all. I'm sure if we keep at it, something new will reveal itself. You really believe that? She's right. There's got to be a bre breakthrough somewhere just waiting for us to find it. Because I know damn well I'm not the killer. There's a bit more to learn about non-stop debates. Yes, teach me. You can concentrate by holding down the RB button. While you're concentrating, time will slow down so you can pay closer attention to what everyone's saying. On top of that, it will steady your aim making it easier to target potential weak spots. Concentrating like this consumes the focus gorge, and if this gorge empties, you can't concentrate. But the focus gorge will recover over time, so let your brain take a rest, no need to rush. Well then, good luck, okay. Right, so it's slow-mo, bullet time. This is, I don't hate our name, I always account. So I guess there's no question that the kitchen knife was the murder weapon. But where does that get us? Makoto must have taken it from the kitchen, right? Yeah. He did it in the Oh, no, not Makoto. When nobody was in the dining hall. Hey, I was there. No, that's wrong. I think we're doing pretty well. I know it's the first okay, wait. one. wait. Hold on. I'm learning. I didn't take the knife from the kitchen. Next, you're going to say you're not the killer, right? Go ahead and say it all you want. Well, what if I have a witness? What do you think, Hina? Huh? Remember what you were telling me earlier? Well, I went to go get some tea from the kitchen last night, and all the knives were still there. But when I finished my tea, I went back into the kitchen to wash my glass. One of the knives was gone. So you're saying the knife disappeared while you were drinking your tea in the dining hall? Yeah. Just to be perfectly clear, the knife disappeared while you were in the dining hall, correct? Y yeah that's right. And at any point while you were there, did you ever see me come into the dining hall? Um, no, I don't think so. You don't think so? No, he definitely wasn't there. I love how the bear's just sitting there watching, loving every moment of this. The knife disappeared while Hina was in the dining hall, but I wasn't there the entire time. In other words, there's no way I could have taken the knife. Okay, then what about this? What if the idiot swimmer girl and Makoto are in on it together and lying to protect each other? Oh, God. Idiot swimmer girl? Oh, and more importantly, why would I get involved in something like that? Speaking of which, I'd like to ask the bear. If there is an accomplice, do they also become yeah, blackened? Yeah, good question. So you ask, and so I shall answer. Each murder is allowed to have an accomplice, but only the one who does the killing will get to graduate. That's interesting. Another rule. So in other words, two people can work together, but one of them has no chance of profiting from it. Then there's no way anyone would work together, right? But 
what if they did work together and they just didn't know about the rule? Ugh, good grief! Enough already! No, okay? There are no accomplices in this case! Oops, did I say that out loud? Anyway, I didn't go to the dining hall, and I didn't take the knife. So I'm not the killer. Okay, so then, who did take the knife? See, that's from Stark, I Hina don't know. seems the obvious candidate. After all, she just said she was in the dining hall. Yeah, that's true. No, no way! I swear it wasn't me! Sure, but can you or anyone else prove that? I can. Oh, okay. That's right! Sakura was with me the entire time I was drinking my tea. Oh, now you tell us? Uh, I hate to have to ask, but just to be sure, Sakura's... Me. Right. But then, couldn't either one of them have grabbed the knife? Actually, no. Because, um... Well... Just spit it out already. I stayed in Hina's room last night. hey -ho! I got so scared thanks to those creepy videos. I wasn't really thinking, I just asked her to stay over. Which means, we have airtight alibis. Yeah, but what if you're working together? You stayed over? Doesn't that violate one of the school regulations? We're not allowed to sleep anywhere but the dorms. But it doesn't say we have to stay in our assigned room. So, I don't think that's a problem. <laughs> yep. It is a problem! A boy and a girl spending the night together? It's... it's... unwholesome! But... I'm a girl. Yeah, she's a girl, you dope. What? You are? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's unwholesome. But if it wasn't either of you, then what other possibility is there? Actually, there is one other possibility. Right, Hina? Oh, yeah, that's true. One other person did come to the dining hall while we were there. Ooh. Why didn't you say so in the first place? Yeah, why? This is just like Phoenix Wright. They forget so many important details. Well, because... They're not here anymore. Oh. Someone who's not here? Are you talking about... Sayaka. She's the one who came to the dining hall. And then later, she wound up dead. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't sure if she was male or female, but when you first speak to her, it's confirmed that she's a female, so I remembered from then. That's the sort of thing that it, it's worth your time to remember. But yeah, everyone else just assumes she's a boy. But they live with her. S Sayaka? Okay, so the person who took the knife from the kitchen was... Monokuma here. It must have been Sayaka. I got it! Then... Sayaka is the one who took the knife? That's the only possibility. And thinking back on it, I mean, she was acting kind of unusual. When she came into the dining hall, she didn't even look at us. She just went straight to the kitchen. Wait, what? She could have, like, killed herself. But then, who would have... Where did the struggle come from, I guess, if she's killed herself? Oh man, I can't wait to find As out. As she left, she said she just wanted a drink of water. But most likely... Then the person who took the knife was the victim herself. I'm sure... I'm sure she just took it for self-defense. So you're saying the knife she took was then taken from her and she was killed with it? In that case, you may not have taken the knife, but you still could have killed her. What? See? He did do it after all! I hate Toko Fukawa. No! You're wrong! I hate her. I get her. So, that's how you would twist the argument and send us all off in the wrong direction? Hmm. You possess a yeah, most she's such terrifying a talent. I hate her smug face. Damn, if I don't do something, they're gonna blame me for the murder. Don't they understand? If they convict me, everyone's gonna die. Hold on. It's still too early to decide conclusively that Makoto is the killer, wouldn't you say? Really, Tom? Trust you. Why don't you go wash some pots with Toka for Kawa? Because you see, if the room did belong to the killer, then they did something most bewildering. I'm only messing. You can like whoever you want. There's no problem with that. And until we unravel that little mystery, you simply can't declare that he's the killer. Bewildering? What the hell are you talking about? Something was missing from the scene of the crime that by all rights should have been there. Really? What's that? 
You know what I'm talking about, don't you? What was missing? Your first hangman's gambit is about to begin. Would you like to hear more? The hair? Oh, yes, the hair of the lint roller. Yes, Noah. As things advance further in a class trial, the hangman's gambit will eventually take place. The point of this is to reveal an important phrase related to the incident in question. Yes, Noah, you've smashed it there. It is the hair. You'll have to deduce the phrase from the letters flying around and the letters already known. Complete the phrase by shooting down the flying letters in the right order. Use the left stick to aim. Okay. If you shoot down the wrong letters, you'll suffer damage to your influence gorge. If this gorge reaches zero, if you run out of time, you fail. Well then, good luck and have fun. Something that should have been at the scene, but wasn't. That must be a crucial point. If we can just figure out what that something is. H. A. Yeah. Hair. Hair, yeah, god damn it. Now I understand. Oh, I like these little mini games. That's right. There wasn't a single hair on the floor. So, the culprit removed some evidence? Yes. And if I were the culprit, why would I need to get rid of all the hair in my own room? Exactly. It wouldn't be unusual at all to find my hair at the crime scene if the crime scene is in my room. The reason all the hair was gone was to remove any trace that Sayaka had ever been there. That makes sense, does it not? No. If that were the case, they would have had to do something about the body itself, not just her hair. Yeah, well, what's she on about, that Celeste? Of course, if her body's there, then, then we know that she was in there. <laughs> yes, very true, very true. Okay, then why wasn't there any hair on the ground? The killer got rid of it all, of course, to remove any trace that they had ever been there. Wait, then that means... Precisely. It's simply beyond reason to believe that the room's owner and the killer are one and the same. Then... Makoto isn't the culprit? No, I'm not the culprit. I've been telling you this whole time. Are you sure we can decide something so important based solely on the absence of some hair? Whoa, look at his eyebrows. I only just noticed them. No. There are other reasons that prove why Makoto couldn't have done it. I would like to hear these reasons. Well, the door's been unscrewed, but I would know how to open it. Do you remember anything remarkable about the bathroom at the scene? Sayaka was attacked in the main room first, then fled into the bathroom, right? Yeah, then they ran after her, got into the bathroom, and stabbed her. And how did the killer get into the bathroom? Did they have any trouble with it? They did have lots of trouble what with it. What do you mean? It's fairly certain that the killer had some trouble getting into the bathroom. There was clear evidence left behind. Do you remember, Makoto? The killer struggled getting into the bathroom, and the evidence that proves it is... The object the killer broke. Which is... this. Yeah, present that. I got it! Evidence that the killer had trouble getting into the bathroom. You're talking about the doorknob, right? I've only just noticed the eyebrows, yeah, man. Huh? The doorknob? <laughs> I've been focusing on all the murders. The doorknob for my bathroom. It was completely broken. See how the top part was unscrewed? And the doorknob's about ready to fall off? Oh, yeah, true. But what does it mean? In trying to bypass the lock, they ended up nearly removing the entire doorknob. This is another most bewildering act for the room's owner. It proves Makoto is beyond suspicion. Oh, Kyoko's got our back. So what? You're She's saying he brilliant. wouldn't break the door in his own room? But if the only choice you have is to break it, you break it. There's nothing bewildering about it. You still don't see? Okay, then. Let's take another look at how the incident unfolded. Hopefully that will help you understand. Kyoko said it was a bewildering act. I almost didn't notice it at first, but is that the key point here? There's a bit more to learn about non-stop debates. Yes, teach me. God, there's loads to learn about this. From here on out, the number of weak spots will start going up. But no matter how many weak spots, there's essentially only one lie or contradiction in that debate. What I'm trying to say is, not all weak spots you see are necessarily false. Use a truth bullet on the wrong one, and not only will you fail to refute what they said, but you'll also lower your trust of everyone and your influence scores will take damage. Now this is important because if your influence scores reaches zero, you fail. 
You'd have to rely on your own logic to determine which weak spots are actually lies or contradictions. Well then, good luck and have fun. <laughs> I love how I always say have fun at the end. Stressful. Right. The bathroom door frame. Only we know how to get in there. The incident took place part. in Makoto's room. Yeah. Sayaka was first attacked in the main room. Yeah. She then fled into the bathroom. Yeah. Then the killer ran after her. And they got into the bathroom. At that point, the killer had to try and bust down the door. No. I don't think because so. Because Sayaka had locked it. No, no, there it is. And finally, the culprit had Sayaka cornered. Did I miss the but word? To finish the job, they stabbed her with the kitchen knife. It was you, wasn't it, Makoto? I admit it. It's about. We already know the, the answer. For some reason I missed it. It's not because the door was locked. No, there's a different reason. Okay. The incident took place in? in the cup. Sayaka was first. She then fled into. Then the killer ran, and they got into the back. At that point, the killer had to try and bust down the door because Sayaka had locked it. Oh, we got it. No, sometimes it, it's really hard to shoot the words. The reason my bathroom didn't open wasn't because it was locked. After all. The girls' rooms are the only ones with walking bathrooms, right? Yes, now that you mention it, that is true. Then why didn't your bathroom door open? So I used the focus feature. Oh, I did, but it ran out on the first time. But no, yeah, I'm sure I'll get used to it. This is like a big tutorial case, so I'm not too worried yet. Because it was stuck. Huh? What are you talking about? My bathroom door doesn't fit in the frame quite right. Monokuma over there can testify to that. Yep. True as true can be. But you know, you're supposed to be the ultimate lucky student, right? But to have such a cruddy door... <laughs> that's not lucky at all! So the reason the door didn't open was just because it was stuck. But the killer didn't know that and assumed it was locked. So they tore apart the doorknob to get in. Okay, but then why would the killer even think the door was locked in the first place? Everyone should have known you can't lock any of the boys' bathrooms. Hmm. Yeah, but they thought it was a girl's room. Because they were going for Sayako. The killer could easily make that mistake, thanks to one important detail about the scene of the crime. Yeah, the nameplates are switched. Yeah. The killer was convinced the bathroom door was locked. So they didn't know that the door actually couldn't be locked. In other words, the important detail about the scene of the crime that they didn't know was the crime took place in my room, but they thought it was in Sayaka's room. I got it! The killer must not have realized that it was my room. Yeah, we're, we're getting there because the nameplates were swapped. What? Are you saying the culprit didn't even know where he was? That's inconceivable! And yet, he's absolutely right. Say what? <laughs> Say what? Well, to be more specific, what the killer didn't know was that Makoto and Sayaka had switched rooms, which is what led to the misunderstanding about the bathroom. If Sayaka had been in her own room, then... Then there would have been a lock on the door, and they would have had to break through! So they had no idea how unnecessary their actions were. Ultimately, we can't know if it came open by force or simply by accident. But, the killer must have been considerably confused, with no idea how they actually got the door opened. Regardless, it was a pointless act. Wasting time trying to break down a door that wasn't locked is... Definitely something I wouldn't do, since I would have known exactly why it wasn't opening, right? That is a definite possibility. Yeah, come on, Togami. Come on our side, dude. So the killer would have to be someone who didn't know they'd switched rooms? Then Makoto couldn't have done it. There we go. Thank you, Fukawa. Finally. That's what I've been trying to tell okay. you. Okay, then who did do it? I'm sorry, but I give up. Quit without saving. It's him. It's him. But what happens if we can't decide on who we think did it? Well then, why don't we just vote right now? Majority rules. Majority rules? You really think that's a good idea? We've got no idea who the killer is yet, so we can't do a vote right now. Yeah, our necks are on the line here. Someone seriously needs to do something. For serious. Does no one have any other thoughts or questions? 
It does not matter how trivial they may seem. Oh, as a matter of fact, I do have one question. Oh, you... Oh, she don't like us, so that's You don't sure. gotta sound so disappointed. It's fine, it's fine. Just ask your question. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... Um... Well... I was just wondering... Yeah. How did the culprit get into Makoto's room in the first place? I'm not sure I know this. Mm. Yes. How did the killer get inside? Maybe Sayaka just dropped the key somewhere and the culprit picked it up. That's possible, right? I mean, she could have dropped it when she went to the dining room to get some water. But how she got back in? It must have not been locked when she left. I don't think so. That seems way too convenient. Then... Maybe someone picked the lock? Negative! If you remember, Monokuma made it quite clear that the locks are all unpickable. Fine. How about this? The killer got in the easy way. Yeah, she let the killer in. They could have knocked and said they wanted to talk or something, and Miss Maizono just let him in. Could be as simple as that, even though she said she wouldn't let anyone in, even if it was us. No, that can't be it either. Oh, trying to argue against me? Sounds like someone doesn't know his place. Hello? Why exactly can't that be it? Because she asked me to do something in particular because of how frightened she was. That's the answer right there. There's no way Saka let someone in because... Uh, <laughs> wait, what? Oh, I don't know here. Because evidence of a struggle? I'm not sure. This is throwing me off a little bit. Maybe it's this? Because someone tried to force their way in? Because um, Saika had originally asked Makoto to switch with her when someone attempted to force their way into her room and she became frightened. I think it might be these. I got it! Because Sayaka was already scared, oh, cool. remember? I think we That's got it. That's why she asked me to switch rooms in the first place. So it's important to maybe read the description sometimes as well. Same goes for you, Sayaka. No matter who it is, don't open your door for anyone. Even if I'm sure it's you, I absolutely won't open it. Otherwise, what's the point of even switching? Knowing what she'd been through, I just can't believe she would have opened the door for anyone. What if her being scared was a lie? Huh? Oh, that's another curve. Yeah, why are we just taking her words well, at face value? What the hell is that supposed to mean? Why would she lie about something like that? I know you don't want to consider it, but look at this and tell me. Can you still deny the possibility? Come see me in my room. Check the nameplates. Oh, hang on. I might as well read the text instead of the actual picture. There's something I want to talk to you about. Just us two. In five minutes, come see me in my room. Check the nameplates to make sure you don't get the wrong room, okay? Oh, what the hell? I found a notepad during my search, and I shaded in the top sheet with a pencil. A notepad? There's a notepad in my room. And these are the words that appear. Oh, man! I've totally seen people do that on detective shows. When you write, it can leave an imprint. Sketch over the next sheet of paper, and you can see the words. When I saw that, I was like, holy crap! I better make sure I rip the paper out before I use it from now on. It's a pretty old-fashioned technique. But even the classics can be surprisingly useful sometimes. Oh, and I should also mention... I found the notepad yeah. on the desk in Makoto's room. I knew it'd be in my room, but so that means um, Sayaka did it in our room. Huh? Which means only someone who had been in Makoto's room before the incident could have written it. Then either it was Makoto who lived there, or Sayaka who switched rooms for a single night. So, Makoto, did you write this? Hell no. No, I didn't. But of course you didn't. Because the note also bears a perfectly legible signature. Oh. Sayaka's signature. <laughs> yeah, she did it all over my room. But at least she cleaned up afterwards with the lint roller. Then that note. Sayaka wrote it. But, but why? Why would she write that? 
The note was likely her way of getting in touch with a certain someone. But who? She must have slid it under their door to let them know she wanted to meet with them in secret. If you got an invitation like that from the ultimate pop sensation, what young man could resist? Of course, I'm only into 2D, so it wouldn't have any effect on me. Oh, he's only into 2D? I had no idea. I wish he mentioned that earlier. But can we be sure anyone even got this note? And honestly, even if they did, I do not think they are at all involved in what happened. Huh? What makes you say that? <laughs> Would you like to hear what I have to say? Not really, but I think we're gonna... Very well then. Pay attention. Right. Contradiction time. So the dorm nameplates. Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, correct? Yes. But in the note, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically says, my room. I see. So if someone read that note, yeah, but it said check then the they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Oh, which... Exactly. The room that Makoto was staying in. No. No, that's wrong. Have I got that right? The nameplates on Mai and Sayaka's rooms got switched. Yeah. They got Ooh. switched? Oh, that was close. I, I was caught, kind of flailing there. That's right. The nameplates got switched, just like the rooms themselves. As a result, the nameplate on Sayaka's room actually had Makoto's name. I'm getting confused with all the rooms. And the nameplate on Makoto's room had Sayaka's. So what you're saying is, the room Sayaka was staying in was actually marked as her room. Yeah, that's the clearest way. The room Sayaka was in had Sayaka's nameplate, the room um, Makoto was in had his nameplate. Then, if someone did do what the note said, they would end up at Makoto's room where Sayaka was. Plus, their rooms are right next to each other, so switching the nameplates would be no problem. And the one who switched the names was... Well, of course it wasn't you, right, Makoto? Right? Okay, then who did it? There's only one person who could have switched the nameplates. The only other person who knew we had switched rooms. Well, yeah, obviously the killer. Sayaka. Yeah. It's gotta be Sayaka, isn't it? Sayaka. I got it! Me and Sayaka were the only ones who ever knew about us switching rooms. Oh, man, I'm getting confused with this room switching bit. So the only other person besides me who would even know to switch the nameplates was Sayaka. You can also infer as much from her note. I think Sayaka tried to kill someone and it backfired. There's something I want to talk to you about. Just us two in five minutes, come see me in my room. Check the nameplates to make sure you don't get the wrong room, okay? <laughs> no, I was gonna, honestly, when I first looked at it, I thought the killer, but that's, that's a stupid answer. <laughs> she specifically tells the reader to check the nameplate. This is so tense, but it's so awesome. I love these trials. She would only have written that if she knew the nameplates had been switched. Yeah, because she didn't want the killer to go to what was previously her room, which was now my room. She wanted the killer to make sure the killer came to the room she was staying in, which used to be my room, but was now her room and had the nameplate on it. <laughs> Fucking hell. But why would she switch them in the first place? Because why would she switch them in the first place? Let's think. What did our room have that hers didn't? I mean, it didn't have a lock on the door. She wanted someone to come to the room she the was in. the bathroom door. And also hide the fact that it was Makoto's room. Because she wanted to frame Makoto for it? What? Inviting someone to your room, but not telling them you'd switched rooms. Why would anyone do that? To understand that, we first need to understand what happened after she invited the person into the room. Yeah, my room had the sword. That's Yeah, but she took the kitchen knife. I think that was her intended murder weapon. I think the killer... I think she used the kitchen knife. The killer held up the sword to block the kitchen knife. And that's why it's got scratches. And then, somehow they got it off her and then used that to kill her. I don't know. That's where the answer lies. What happened then was... 
Probably whoever she invited over came in and attacked her. I think she attacked them. We figured it out! We know who did it! Whoever she invited over is the culprit! But we still don't know who it is, you goddamn idiot! Sayaka fought with her killer there in the room, yes? Perhaps the answer to our previous question lies in that initial struggle. Yes, I think you're right. It's whoever's got gold on their hand. Then... We just have to figure out what happened during the fight, right? That reminds me. There was a replica sword at the murder scene. Was that perhaps used during the fight? Yeah. Oh yeah. What's the deal with that sword? Yeah, Sayaka used the sword. Sayaka suggested I should hold on to it. I thought it might come in handy if I had to defend myself. It seems pretty likely that the killer used it to break Sayaka's right wrist. How the hell could you possibly know that's what broke her wrist? The reason I know Sayaka's wrist was broken with the fake sword is because when you look at her wrist, there's no doubt um, there's gold on it. In fractured and her wrist was glittery at the injury location. Yeah, so she got hit with it so hard. Because it's a replica. No, it's this, right? Because there's gold on the wrist. It's got to be this bit. I got it! All you have to do is take a good look at her broken wrist. And it should become pretty clear. Right there where her wrist is all swollen. There's something glittery there. See? Is... Is that gold? It sure is. Specifically, the gold coating from the replica sword. You barely have to touch that stuff, and it'll stick right to you. And there's some on her wrist because... I got it! Because she got hit with the sword, right there on her wrist! I see, I see. And so the truth draws ever closer. That. So the sheath makes minimal sense. Well, the sheath... The sheath bears marks of the kitchen knife. So maybe they ha they were defending themselves, then they unsheathed it, and because it's a replica sword, when they hit her with it, it didn't cut her, because it's like a blunt replica. I don't know. All right, then we'll it's about out. time to solve this mystery. What happened in my room? And what led to Sayaka's death? That's what we need to make clear. There's a bit more to learn about. Oh, there's a bit more. Oh my, are you serious? Are you getting used to these non-stop debates? I think so. Start with the next debate, I'll start loading multiple truth bullets into your truth cylinder. But just like with the weak spots, only one of those bullets can actually refute the proper statement. In other words, from here on out, you'll have to combine the right truth bullets with the right weak spots. Oh man. If you come up with the wrong combination, you'll take damage to your influence gorge. <laughs> There's always a bit more to learn. You can press the LB button to rotate your cylinder. Press and release the LB button to cycle through each bullet. We can hold down the LB B button to, uh, and use the left stick to do it. Okay. By the way, if the logic difficulty is set to kind, fewer bullets will be loaded. For our purposes this time, the logic difficulty will be set to mean. Oh, then good luck and have fun. Mean's like hard difficulty. Yeah, the prologue is, was easy compared to this. <coughs> oh, man. Replica sword sheath. Uh, not kitchen knife set. I think replica sword is what we're looking at for. When the fighting broke out. The culprit grabbed the sword, and that's when the first blow was dealt. A sword-based sneak attack! Um, and no, that's is a... what broke Miss Maizono's wrist! So, she tried to fight back. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. Yeah, maybe. But then the culprit took that from her, too. Yeah, somehow and they I think killed he her with it. And that's exactly what happened. No, she, I think she attacks first. If the person with the sword really did attack first, there's no explanation. Yeah, okay, so it's the sheath. It's the sheath. When the fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword. And that's when the first blow was dealt. No, that's wrong. A sword-based sneak attack. I think that's no, wrong. No, that's wrong. Oh, man. Actually, no. I don't think the fight started with the sword. Yeah, it started with the kitchen knife on the sheath. Huh? Why not? <laughs> because the sword sheath had been scratched. See? There's a gash in it. Like someone cut into it with something sharp. Something sharp? You mean like the kitchen knife? 
That was the only sharp thing found at the scene. Stop jumping ahead. Slow down and explain it so I get what the hell's going on. If the sword was used first, there wouldn't be any explanation for the scratch on the sheath. If you were going to attack with the sword, you'd take it out of the sheath first, right? Yeah. That's true. With the sheath on, it'd be heavy and bulky and useless as shit. Okay, so how did the sheath get damaged? If they got attacked with the kitchen knife, maybe they grabbed the sword as a defensive impulse. Definitely. In that situation, there wouldn't be any time to actually unsheath the sword. That's what I've been saying all along. So you're saying the sword was initially used to defend against an attack from the knife? Yeah, like that. Hold it up like that. Which oh, man. means this is really whoever difficult. had the kitchen knife was the one who attacked first. I think I get it. So here's how it all played out. The culprit came in, found the kitchen knife hidden there somewhere. Then they took the knife and attacked Sayaka before she knew what was happening. No, she attacked So them. she grabbed the sword to defend herself. But then the culprit took that from her too. Then, after they broke her wrist with the sword, they took the knife and finished it. Sorry, but I don't think Sayaka used the sword to defend herself. What? How the hell can you not think that? Because she never held the sword at all. There's a certain part of her body that makes this clear. Part of her body that shows that she never used the sword. If you wanted to use a sword, which part of your body would have to touch it? Her palms. I got it! Easy. You're talking about her palms, right? The palms of her hands were perfectly clean. So I don't think she ever picked up the sword. How can you know that just by looking at her palms? Like I said before, the gold coating on that sword comes right off. All you have to do is touch it. In fact, if you look, you'll notice that a lot of the gold has already come off the handle. It's safe to assume that's because whoever used the sword got some of it on their hands. There's really no way she could have picked it up and come away completely clean. Maybe she washed her hands after she escaped into the bathroom. Mm, maybe? Sorry, but I don't think so. You're too scared about some Why kind of barging. Why do you say that? Is it because you think I'm ugly? N no, that's not it at all. There's no way uh, Saya can wash the gold coating off her hands because there's a certain regulation that talks about what happens. Oh yeah, the water was off. I got it! According to the Monokuma the file, Sayaka's time of death was around 1.30 a.m. In other words, at night time. And the water in the bathroom shuts off at night time, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Actually, I haven't taken <laughs> well, a shower here yet. Well, and, and Tom likes this girl, <laughs> this stinky Fukawa. Oh, my. <laughs> Maybe you wash your hands, it's like a panic reaction. You're no different! You smell like a big, fat, ugly donkey! That's so harsh, I hate her. Hmm? I'm not sure whether to take that as an insult or a compliment. An insult, obviously. So anyway, if Sayaka never touched the sword, then that means the killer is the only one who used the sword. But hold on, if that's right, then the one who damaged the sheath with the kitchen knife was... The one who damaged the sheath would have to have been the one without the sword. Sayaka. I got it! Sayaka? <laughs> she yeah, had sorry, the kitchen Tom. knife? But we already said that the attack started with... The person with the knife attacked first, and the sword was used as an impromptu defense. Yeah. And the one who attacked first was... The Sayaka? Now do you understand? She wasn't a blameless victim in this. She started it all, but it backfired. No, far from it. It's almost as if she'd been planning to commit a murder of her own. Yep. What? She took the knife from the kitchen, then invited the culprit to the room she was staying in. And if it's true that she had the kitchen knife and attacked without provocation... Indeed. These are all the actions of an assailant. Which brings up another point. Makoto, Sayaka was the one who suggested you two switch rooms, correct? Yeah. Maybe the reason she wanted to switch rooms was so that she could pin the crime on you. That is a possibility, is it not? Yeah, I guess so. Sayaka wanted to... on me? That would also explain why she would switch the nameplates. Oh, yeah, it's probably the other dead girl. She wanted to get whoever she had targeted to come to Makoto's room where she was staying. 
Yeah, uh, for some reason when you said that, I just like, I bet he's right. I bet he's 100% right. And by committing the murder there, instead of her room, that would implicate Makoto. But for that to work, the target had to be lured out while still keeping the room swap a secret. If the target knew she had switched rooms, they would have become suspicious right away. So all that's why she switched the names? But doesn't that plan seem a little risky? For one thing, even if her plan worked, Mr. Naegi would just tell everyone they'd switched rooms. I don't know. I'm not sure our soft-hearted Makoto is capable of that kind of cutthroat behavior. I'm sure Sayaka realized the same thing, which is why out of all of us, she asked him to switch rooms. Plus, she was the ultimate pop sensation. A totally forgettable kid, or a national superstar. Who are you more likely to believe? Mm. Wait, then you're saying she had this all planned out? Holy shit! But in the end, her plan backfired. She launched her attack with the knife, then found herself under attack in turn. That must be when her wrist got broken, and she was forced to drop the knife. The tables were suddenly turned on her, and she died at the hands of the one she'd planned to murder. Just hold on! That can't be true! Because... because... Hey! Hey! You guys have totally derailed the argument! You're being super totally boring right now! Come on, hurry up and decide who did it! Wouldn't it be awful if I had to punish you all just because you ran out of time? You can do that? Oh yeah, we gotta decide who we think did it. Makoto, right now you just need to concentrate on figuring out the answer to this mystery. If we can't uncover who murdered Sayaka, it's over for all of us. Is, is it really all over? Obviously I'm committed to find out who killed her, but what can I do? I mean, as far as clues go, there's nothing left. Right, okay. Let's see about this. Dying message. Oh, of course. Leon. It's easy just to say, hey, decide who did it. But there just aren't any more clues, right? There is. No, that's wrong. There still might be one clue left. Sayaka's dying message. Dining? Wait, wh what did you say? <laughs> dining. No, dying. Sack. The dying message. She wrote something on the wall behind her, remember? One, one, zero, three, seven. Written in her own blood. There must be a clue about the killer hidden in there. Well, before we get too far into that, I need to ask, can we really be sure that Sayaka is the one who wrote it? No, not really. Yeah, there's a bit more to learn. I was waiting for that. There's no question that Sayaka wrote that message and I can prove it. Oh. Is it her left index finger had a blood prick on it? I got it! Her left index finger had blood on it. Yeah. That could only be because she used that finger to write the message. Oh, that's kind of clutch. Yeah, finger. I see. She broke her right wrist during the fight, so she'd have to use her left hand to write. Sure. I think we can all agree Sayaka wrote it. But still, what the heck do those numbers mean? One, one, zero, three, seven? Hey, Chihiro, you're a computer nerd or whatever, right? You should know all about numbers and shit. N no, that's not. Yes, I'm a programmer, oh, but I don't see any kind of meaning in these numbers. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. You know, earlier I was like, I wanted to speak to the, the big guy about the numbers because he's the programmer he's not the programmer he's the fan fiction guy she's the programmer i completely forgot about her of course it's because they're not numbers oh letters. yeah it looks like it looks like we got away with that yeah she's the program i just realized myself huh? what what he he's the fan fiction writer no it's just a look at the numbers assuming they're not numbers don't these first two, one one, look less like two numbers and more like one letter? Ah, oh, you're right. The connecting line is barely there, so I assumed it was one one, but looking at it now, 
You could also read it as an N. Honestly, oh, says no. <laughs> Whoa, you might have finally so just said something worth a shit. It could be no. <laughs> Our little gray cells are really getting excited now. But even if that really is an N, N037, doesn't make any more sense than before. Damn it, it's no use. I just don't know. Rotate the image 180 degrees. Okay, no, it's Leon. It is Leon. Huh? Rotate it? I, I think maybe... Maybe I see something. Oh my god. Now I see. She wrote down the killer's name. Huh? You just shot past the clue part and right on to who did it. So, whose name did she write? Saki... Uh, What's her name? Sayaka's dying message reveals the real killer's name. If you turn her message 180 degrees, it should become crystal clear. Wait, what? Select someone. Who's called Leon? my answer <laughs> the key to solving this mystery was simply to rotate the writing 180 <laughs> degrees I can't believe it one of them was called Leon this whole time and we didn't realize just because there's so many characters Leon if you turn the message around it becomes the letters L E O N oh my god L E O N or more accurately Leon yeah, you didn't realize. Like, yeah, but Tom knew the whole time. <laughs> what are you, what's up, Captain? I don't know what you're saying there. Is something offensive? Is something in Japan is, is offensive? What? What? What the hell are you talking about? It, it's just a coincidence. Coincidence? Come on. It's dude. just a bunch of random squiggles that happen to look like my name. No, it's not random at all. She wrote that message on the wall behind her as she oh was God. leaning up against it. Stephanie's, I'm not as smart as you think. It's Leon. <laughs> oh, it didn't translate it. All oh, right. <laughs> In that position, she couldn't move to write normally and had to write upside down, as it were. And as a result... I think the Japanese are incredibly clever. They made this game. When you look at it standing in front of her, it ends up getting flipped. Try it for yourself if you want. Write something sitting like her, and the letters will be inverted. I'll take your word for it. Th that sounds like one hell of a stretch to me. I'm the killer? You can't just go and say shit like that. If you're not the killer, then why did you try to destroy the evidence? Huh? You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The evidence Leon tried to get rid of? He's buttoned up shirt. It's that thing I found on the ground in front of the incinerator, right? Burnt shirt piece. A piece of burnt clothing was found next to the incinerating trash room. It's apparently part of a shirt cuff and it has a blood stain on it. It's got to be that. I got it! You no mean worries, Captain. Thank you for the burnt shirt food. piece I found laying on the ground by the incinerator, right? As the killer stabbed Sayaka, they must have gotten some of her blood on them. And to dispose of the shirt covered in the victim's blood, they threw it into the incinerator. But one piece burned off and got left behind. And the killer didn't notice. If they had, they most certainly would have panicked. Isn't that right, Leon? What? 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 Uh. But is one scrap of fabric enough to conclude that Leon is guilty? Yeah, I mean, Leon's not the only one wearing a white button-up. That, that's right! There are plenty of other people here with shirts like mine. With just that one little charred piece, there's no way you can say for sure who it belongs to. You're right. That alone isn't enough. But there are some other points that may reveal the truth. Hey, good stuff, Monkey. You better than a shower. Showers are for losers. Baths are for winners. Are you finally starting to understand? The answers to all the riddles are right here. Yeah, I think so. The 
burnt remains of the button-up shirt, which the killer wasn't able to get rid of. There's something about it we need to pay attention to in order to figure out who's responsible. I don't know on this one. How it was disposed of. When it was disposed of. Or where. It's got to be where. When? Why do you think it's when? I think it's where. When it was disposed of. My gut says where, because we know how and where. Oh, maybe, yeah. Maybe you're right, Mikey. The time the shirt was destroyed, if we focus on that, the killer will become clear. Shoot! Oh, no. <laughs> okay, Mikey. <laughs> Unlucky. So it's where? Oh, it's how. Oh, fuck me. Shoot. We're choking. We're choking. It's how. It's the incinerator. I got it. Da, da, da. Oh. If we look closely at how the shirt back. was disposed of, we should be able to figure out who the killer is. Oh, oh yeah. That's a good point. I, I think I know what you're going to oh. say. All right. Well, we could do You can't reach the incinerator fine. without opening the gate in front of the trash room, right? And obviously, you wouldn't be able to hit the switch to turn it on either. You need the key to get in, and the one with the key was the person on cleaning duty. So the killer had to be whoever was in charge of taking care of the trash, right? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. No, that's wrong. There was another way to use the incinerator without being the one on cleaning duty. And that's exactly what proves that Leon is the real killer. Wait, what's the other way to use it? Did he throw a baseball at the button? Oh, he threw the crystal ball because it's like a baseball. He threw it at the button, threw the grate. The key to the trash room. Whoever was on cleaning duty must have had it, right? So the only one who could get to the incinerator was the person in charge of the trash? Was that wrong? Shoot. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. I'm, I'm flailing. Yeah, he threw the, the crystal ball the because he's a, a baseball player. Whoever was on cleaning duty. So the only one who the person. And you'd have to get close to the incinerator oh, this. in order just to destroy. Waited. Should have waited a bit no, longer. No, that's wrong. Oh, okay. Leon's the baseball player. The ultimate baseball Hold player. Hold on. I think I know how someone could dispose of the evidence without using the trash room key. But if you can't get past the gate, you couldn't possibly turn on the incinerator, could you? Yes, you could. Yes, you could. If you used this. What is it, some kind of glass ball? It's busted to hell. Actually, it was supposed to be a crystal ball, but, uh... But how would you use it? The killer had to use the glass ball in a certain way, which was... Throw it! I got it! The killer simply took aim at the incinerator switch and threw the ball through a gap in the gate. All they had to do was hit that switch and the incinerator would come to life. Someone threw that... threw a gap in the gate? Remember what you said before, Hifumi? Huh? Someone turned the incinerator on. Very strange. I'm quite certain it was off last time I was down here. Perhaps it was the work of a fairy. Kifumi had the key, so the only way the incinerator could have been turned on without his knowledge was because the killer was able to hit the switch without opening the gate. Once they'd gotten the incinerator going, all they had to do was ball up the shirt and toss it in. Mm, could you really throw a shirt Hey, that come on! What the hell is this? All you have to do is look at the scene to know that the killer never actually went inside the trash room. The shards of broken glass, the incinerator left running, the piece of shirt that escaped the fire? If the killer had been on cleaning duty, the evidence would have been taken care of much more thoroughly. Wait, wait, no, just hold on. But the distance from the gate to the incinerator has to be at least 30. The pinpoint accuracy you'd need to throw a glass ball that far and hit something that small 
Could someone really do that? That that's right. There's no way. It'd be impossible. Difficult, absolutely. Impossible? I don't think so. Because the killer is. It wouldn't have been much of a challenge at all for the killer because they're the ultimate baseball star. I got it! Oh, we're getting it. Because the killer is the ultimate baseball star. Isn't that right, Leon? Do you do you have any idea how stupid you sound right now? A target 30 feet away would surely be little challenge for the ultimate baseball star. You, you, you can't be serious. I'm not the killer. These goddamn shipper brains have got it all wrong. I'm telling you. I think he's the killer, you right? You still won't admit it? Okay, then. Makoto, go ahead and review the incident one more time to make his crime perfectly clear. The killer is the fatty guy? No. And with that, we can end this. Listen to me! What the hell do you mean, end this? Say what you want, Leon. But all the questions have been answered. And the truth has been revealed. Now here's what happened. The closing argument is about to begin. Would you like to hear more? <laughs> There's something else to learn. You like the baseball guy? <laughs> A minute ago, you, you just said, who's Leon? <laughs> Every case has one last element to bring the class trial to an end. This is the closing argument. In this phase, you'll give a complete summary of the case. You'll have to reproduce the flow of events for the case in the form of a comic book. However, you'll notice that in the comic, there are a number of pieces missing. It's up to you to complete the comic using the provided truth panels. Also, if you take aim at a missing section and press the A button, holy cow, you'll get a hint that might lead to a breakthrough. Good luck and have fun. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> There's a bit more to learn. Wait, what? where's the beginning? Oh, that goes the wrong way. Act one. Um, what the? I think that's right. He put that up, and he whacked her with it. And then he, then he, hmm, where did she drop the knife? See, she's standing when she dropped, oh, the drop knife goes here. Oh, so when does he whack her with it? You can get a hint, remember? Okay. When does he whack her with the, uh, the sword? Oh, no, when, sorry. When does he do this bit? They forced the bathroom door open. The only logical way they could have done that was... Okay. With the screwdriver. Right. After she was stabbed... Um... So I can use the last of her strength to leave something behind. Yeah, and then he used the lint roller. Gemma, do you want to do five more minutes so I'll just finish this case? Is that alright? I think it's going to overrun a little bit. Put that there. The object the kid of through. That. Kid of Fruit and the incinerator was this. Oh, oh god, there's even a bit when he goes into the room. So what are we missing? Wait, is there too many uh, puzzle pieces than there are panels? My room was the scene of the crime. It instantly began when the killer entered. So did this never happen? First, when Saka attacks the killer um, with a knife, they notice something in my room. That. They use that object to deflect, yeah. 
After the killer counter attack with an up attack on their own, what did they do next? Oh, after the killer. Okay, so this is where this one goes in. Because she's been shown to drop the knife here. I think this is right. So I think there's an extra one that you don't need, which is this one. Because it's basically that. It's, in fact, it's just a smaller cut of that. That is the same image, which is zoomed in. So I think we're good. The killer is you! I think I'd better take one more look back at the case from the beginning. Last night, the killer went to the room Sayaka was in. In other words, my room. From what we can tell, Sayaka invited that person there intending to kill them. She attacked them with the knife she'd taken from the kitchen earlier. Yeah, but then sense. something happened that she wasn't prepared for. They grabbed the fake sword I put in my room and fought back. During the struggle, a strike from the sword broke Sayaka's right wrist. And that's when she lost her grip on the kitchen knife. Finding herself cornered, Sayaka panicked and ran into the bathroom. The killer went after her, but couldn't get the bathroom door open. What they didn't know was that my bathroom door got stuck easily, and there was a trick to opening it. Sayaka knew about that because I'd told her, but of course the killer had no way of knowing. So instead, the killer forced the door open, took the kitchen knife, and stabbed Sayaka. Yeah, I think we got it. But with what strength she had remaining, Sayaka left a dying message. To keep the killer from noticing, she wrote it on the wall behind her. And with that, all her strength was gone. With Sayaka dead, the killer quickly began destroying the evidence. First, they took off their shirt, which was covered in their victim's blood. Then they took the lint roller in my room and cleaned up the entire area. They wanted to make sure they got rid of any trace they'd ever been there. Afterwards, the killer headed to the trash room to destroy their bloody shirt. They tried to burn the shirt using the incinerator there but the trash room was blocked off by an especially sturdy gate, preventing access to the incinerator. So they came up with a plan to use Hero's crystal ball, which he'd left in the laundry room. The killer managed to throw the ball through the gap in the gate and hit the incinerator switch. For any normal person, that'd be an impossible throw but the killer had the confidence to take a shot. And that's because the killer was the ultimate baseball star. It makes crazy sense, somehow. The crystal ball, thrown with absolute precision, hit the switch on the incinerator, which then quickly roared to life. Having destroyed the final piece of evidence, they left the area with, I imagine, a sigh of relief. But there was one thing they missed. Part of the shirt they'd thrown into the fire burnt away and fell out of the incinerator. Why did he kill her? Because <laughs> she tried to kill him. The killer didn't notice this, and so left behind a piece of indisputable evidence. She attacked him. Isn't that right, Leon? It would appear that Hero simply forgot his crystal ball in the laundry room. You went there to try and wash the blood out of your shirt, and that's where you saw it, right? Seeing the ball 
You thought of a way to take care of everything. So how is he bad? Because he killed someone. <laughs> and if someone dies and they don't figure out the murderer, then they all die and the murderer goes free. So, Leon, do you object to anything that's been said? Yeah, he, he maybe it could have been justified, if you want. She attacked him first. But if us lot don't get the right murderer, we all die. So whether it was right or wrong that he killed her, that's not for us to decide. We just have to find out who killed her. Yeah, it doesn't matter that she attacked him. We don't care about how it started. She could have had a gun to his head and was about to pull the trigger. That wouldn't matter. The fact is, he killed her and we need to find the murderer. We're not going to send him to prison or nothing like that. We need to make sure we don't die. Because if we, like I said, if we say that, say, Kyoko killed her, then we would all die because we're wrong. Yeah, exactly. Um, in fact, guys, oh fuck, I can't save in here. Oh my god. Yeah, I just need to get Alice bits so I can save. Is that right? It should be right to the end. Huh? Is that right? Sorry, uh, Tom. Is there much? Is there much more to this? No, we're not gonna kill him. The bear's gonna kill him. Do I object? Hell yes, I object. Of course I do. I object. I object. I object. Right. We've been doing this for like an hour and a half, this trial case. It's I mean, all enough. of this is just a bunch of stupid theories. You need evidence. Where's the evidence? Without evidence, it's all bullshit. It's bullshit, and I refuse to acknowledge it. Well then, I guess this is as good a time as any to present the evidence that proves you did it. Makoto, I believe you're in possession of that evidence. Okay, dude, we'll have to fly through it, because I can't do this again. We've spent an hour and a half on it. Right, your first bullet time battle is about to begin. Oh my god, there's more to learn. What the fuck? Sometimes during a class trial, your opponent simply won't want to hear what you have to say. When this happens, you will engage them in a head-to-head -head battle. We like to refer to this as a bullet time battle, aka the BTB, by the way. During the BTB, you want to destroy your opponent's statements in time with the rhythm. Match your button presses with each tempo marker as they move across the screen and reach the center. Press the A button to lock on uh, to to lock onto an opponent's statement. The shortest statement you've locked onto with the Y button as the tempo. Oh my god, this is confusing. Okay, I think I get it. Use this weapon to deal damage to your opponent. If you can't pull it off, you'll be the one in pain. A to select, Y to destroy. Do this consecutively and you'll start a combo. Keep this going and you'll initiate a tempo up. On the flip side, if you keep missing, you'll get into a tempo down situation. When the tempo changes, so does the timing for hitting each button. So watch out for that. Deal enough damage to your opponent and their weak spot statement will appear. At that point, you can press the Y button to shoot it down with a truth bullet like any other statement. Okay. Right. Just like before, if your infant score reaches zero, you run out of time, you fail. I'm a little bit worried about this one. When the killer removed the screws from the doorknob, they didn't use anything from your room to do it. Instead, they must have used something that belonged to them. Yeah, because they didn't know that she would have a screwdriver in her room because they thought it was a girl's room. I refuse to acknowledge you. You're stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Stupid, 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 stupid. I have to show how indisputable evidence that Leon is the killer. I need to figure it out. Right, okay. This is crazy, crazy. The moment of truth. Where's your proof? You kidding me? Not a chance. Oh, as easy as that. It wasn't me. Stupid. You lie. Stop talking. Shut up. Where's your proof? Wait, what's going on? You kidding me? Not a chance. Why am I not looking on now? You lie! Shut up! Where's your proof? What's you kidding on? me? Not a chance! Oh, do I need to get enough combos? It wasn't to me! Shoot down? Stupid! You lie! Stop talking! Shut up! Where's your proof? You kidding me? Not a chance! Where's your proof? This should prove it. Did I do it? Oh man, I think I got it. 
break. The screws on the bathroom doorknob were removed. I wonder what kind of tool the killer used to remove them. I mean, it had to be a screwdriver, right? Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure the tool kits we got each had one inside. And that must be what he used. There aren't any other tools anywhere. But the toolkit in my room had clearly never been used. Yeah, That's he because the culprit have. didn't know it was your room. They thought they were in Sayaka's room. They thought it was a girl's room, so it wouldn't be a screwdriver. Only the boys got toolkits, so the killer naturally assumed there wouldn't be one in there. Okay, then whose toolkit did the killer use? Stupid, stupid, stupid! He used his own. It had to be their very own toolkit. Yeah. Stupid, 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 stupid! Leon, would you mind showing us your toolkit? If I'm right about this, then the screwdriver will show some evidence of being used. Stupid, stupid, stupid! Huh? And if you say you used it for something else, you'll have to explain exactly when, where, and why. And let me say this right now. I lost it isn't an excuse at this point. Stupid! <laughs> Stupid! <laughs> so, you have no rebuttal? Then it would seem we are finished here. The hell? It's so weird. Oh, can I save? Hey, we've got an A. Hell yeah. What, did we get 75 medals? <laughs> oh, you're not gonna let me save? Yes, I can save. Oh, guys, I'm sorry to end it there, but um, I can't keep going because obviously I share this room with Gemma and uh, I agreed that I would start stopping at 10 on Thursdays. She's got work tomorrow as well. I know we're leaving it on a bit of a cliffhanger, but I have overrun, so I'm sorry, Gemma, I'm sorry I've run a little bit. We're going to end it here now. Let's double check that definitely saved. That was incredible.